Hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Sorry, I'll start my video. That would make sense, wouldn't it? There we go. Excellent. Hey. Just having a little relax on a on the um, tour. Well, uh, yeah, I, I actually just got a call from Dean. I think he was meant to do this interview with you. Um, but he's traveling today. Um, so he's rang and he's like, oh, my reception's fucked. Can you do this? Um, which I thought might happen. So, um, all good. Sort of been on standby anyway. Yeah. I get but, that. Um, it's nice yeah, to be able I, to do this, uh, like a face to face kind of, I guess, now these days rather than everything just over phone. Oh, yeah. Big time. Um, I didn't really think about it a whole lot because I would just, you know, get the email and take the instructions. But um, it's way nicer than like, yeah, trying to imagine some stranger over the phone. I like it a lot. Mm. And it's always that way where, like, I know what you look like, but you never necessarily know what the interviewer looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I feel like it just facilitates, like, more, like, better human conversation anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Even when I'm on tour, I try to, like, FaceTime call my wife and daughter even a short FaceTime feels like we've all caught up more than like, you know, just chatting on the old blower. <laughs> it's kind of nice from that side of it where it's like, we all keep saying because of the pandemic, we're so disconnected, but we can still be connected as well. Yeah. Which has been a nice change of pace. Yeah. Oh, it feels like hilarious to me. Cause um, uh, we're all based in Brisbane and our management and pretty much all our like industry team is um, in Sydney and for years it seemed like no one like could fucking organize like a, a working skype meeting of any description like it was just always a rabble every single time and then it only took a global pandemic for us to all get fucking zoom and be like hey this works really well <laughs> and it's like zoom's been around forever as well it's like why do we have to go through the pain of skype for all these years just for this yeah. little program to sneak up <laughs> yeah how is skype so bad like oh my god <laughs> i think it's pretty much gone now after all of this really <laughs> yeah good riddance <laughs> well i suppose i'll say like congrats on the upcoming album and tour Thanks. um which is pretty great. I'm very excited. Um, I've thankfully been able to listen to it a little bit before coming into this, um, nice. at, which is, yeah, it, it has been nice. Very good. <laughs> um, and I'd like to think that there's been a bit of development between say your self-titled in 2020 and now like a new kind of spin on your older, well-known sound, um, which is good. Also, I should say congratulations on the grapevine drop as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So shit's happening all over the place. I can't. Yeah. Um, Once the blade up. starts spinning, it just goes. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's a good feeling, you know. This is what it did feel like for, um, you know, many years and felt like something that we'd worked hard for. And we, we loved how um, busy our little, you know, rock and roll life felt. And, um, it's it's very nice for it to, to feel a bit like that again where like you can't even keep up with you know everything that's going on yeah is that kind of because i've been trying to i've been pondering on your titling choice for this one weirder and weirder and has it for me in listening to the album and i'm sure a lot of people hopefully will get the same pick that i'm about to say when they listen to it is a lot of it come from you growing up as musicians and getting older and having families and that it's that concept of like I still feel the same but everything's different or was it that direct result of say like you know we've had two years of the industry just kind of being in tatters and that's been a weird feeling coming back out of it um I, I said both those observations you made are correct and and I, I think it's really like a bit of everything um that's um resulted in the album being named after that song weirder and weirder um which i'm trying to think back I, I keep getting asked about the record and and the song not surprisingly i'm doing press for the album <laughs> i should probably <laughs> do a tiny bit of preparation 
but I, it's making me, especially today, want to go back and find out when I wrote that song because I have this inkling that I might have first demoed that before COVID had really even come along, but I, I'm not sure. I need to check. Um, either way, when I wrote that song, which in some ways, like the hook of that song ends, ends up, um, especially because we titled the album Weirder and Weirder, ends up embodying a lot of what, what's going on in the storytelling of the album. Um, yeah, it's, it's more just a reflection of how we felt, yeah, as you said, growing up, um, moving into parenthood, um, having, oh, and it doesn't even have to be about parenthood. I would even just say adulthood, just the journey of like, you know, having more and more responsibilities creep into your life, whether whether you want them or not. And then, yeah, throw a pandemic in the mix. And I think it's safe to say that um, all of us, especially our generation, with also issues like climate and stuff in the mix, yeah, feeling weirder and more unsure than ever before. One of the jokes we kept saying, which fed into us wanting to title the album Weirder and Weirder, was us just saying that, you know, life didn't feel like it was getting better or worse. It was just getting weirder. Um, and yeah, like it, we, we were searching for an album title uh, and there was a few things kicking around and we've always looked through all the song titles, even though we've never had a, um, you know, a, a, a self-titled record before, oh, sorry, not self-titled, a title track before. Mm. Um, but this time when we were looking and we got to that song, within minutes. I remember all five of us were hanging out in a hotel room in Melbourne, just having some beers. And we were like, that's it. It feels perfect, you know? Because, <laughs> mm. um, yeah, I was, you know, obviously doing all the interview prep and everything. I was looking at some of the previous stuff you had said about, uh, like, the self-titled album in 2020. And it was named after the band as, like, your renaissance era. This is our band. This is what we stand for. And I wanted to ask if this kind of development in your sound is like the development of what the Renaissance has become as you've gotten older, like through the pandemic as well, or is it just trying something new? You wanted to shift your sound a little bit in a different direction? Yeah. Um, I'm sure that there are elements of like that more conscious thought about how the band is evolving and changing and, and trying to tap into that. And um, self-titling the previous record was also something that we didn't really see coming uh, when we kicked the whole um, campaign off. I hate using that word campaign, but <laughs> it's the best I got. Mm. Um, uh, and, and yeah, it was a strange act that, again, I didn't foresee like especially when we were writing and recording that album you you just kind of focus it's like very microscopic at that point you're just thinking about the song that's in front of you and then um it always intrigues me that at this point where you're doing press for a record naturally listeners draw connections between things and interpret the whole work as this like cohesive thing which is certainly what we want we want the record to feel cohesive um but, but yeah back back to the question like I think self-titling the last record uh, did make us feel differently about ourselves. And also the the last record went so much better than we expected. Um, I guess referring specifically to songs like, well, like Cherub, um, which we never um, planned for it to be like a radio single or for it to be so as, or as popular as it was. These were all just like um, really fortuitous surprises that um, kind of like refreshed our attitude towards making music. I think we've gained a lot of confidence. Uh, we sort of feel like we know where our lane is and we're happy to stay there and just only listen to what feels right for us. Um, and, and I'd say that's more the overarching thing as opposed to us having discussions about any particulars with like, this is how we should evolve the sound. I think the big, um, change of attitude and making the previous record was um, really leaning into each song, almost putting blinders on and just doing whatever we felt like that recording needed. And we tried to carry that into the new record too. And, and I think that attitude just helps you uh, go places that you don't expect to go. You're like less concerned about it being matchy matchy or friends with the other songs on the record. You just like, just focus on 
this little world we're in right now and do whatever makes us feel, you know, something. Which is great. Cause when I listened to the album, I was like, wow, there's a lot of cohesion here. So it's, um, it's kind of funny to hear that it's like really that microcosm, which ends up just working well in the big picture. Um, I suppose in the fact that you're saying you kind of know your lane better, did you have the same, how will I phrase it, grueling recording experience with this album or was it pretty smooth sailing because you kind of knew where you wanted to go? Yeah, well, that's a really good question. It's funny too because um, even though I'm talking about us having kind of like breakthroughs in our thinking on the previous record, which were all, um, you know, breakthroughs for the better, we were really plagued i guess on the last record by our by our um, our studio which was um not a real studio it was just a sorry about my snotty nose by the way i've had no terrible worries. hay fever today um uh it was just a rehearsal room in like a facility where there's a whole bunch of other rehearsal rooms um and yeah it was not a suitable place to make a record even though that's what we we're doing in there and it's just a fucking nightmare um and that's probably been one of the biggest like logistical changes for this new record is we moved into a new studio. Um, we've got like a little um, timber cottage in the, um, in the valley in Brisbane. Uh, and, and it's just us there. It's um, technically a bit smaller, but it, we've got like the whole building to ourselves. So we've got like a storeroom and a kitchen and then just one big working room where we rehearse and record and have everything. Um, and oh my god it's just like changed our world like if anything we started kind of like we'd, we'd rock up and we'd start pretty early we'd start at like 9 nine thirty, and sometimes by like two o'clock or like lunchtime basically we'd, we'd have something resembling a finished song and we started getting concerned that like we were working too fast and too easy in the new studio <laughs> without the challenges of the old place we were like I don't know. We're just like working too efficiently and it made us question, are these songs any good? Like this is coming too easy. We had like a weird crisis because we're just like, we feel like we've always had to struggle a lot harder to get the music, <laughs> but yeah, but that's not, not happening. So that's like a weird, weird crisis like to have. Anti-crisis crisis kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's like, it's just, yeah. You know, like there's just this, um, perpetual kind of narrative that everyone should struggle and suffer for their art kind of thing so we were like ah oh, we need more suffering <laughs> <laughs> well, i suppose it's good to maybe finally not suffer when writing um after <laughs> what seven albums now um yeah yeah um i suppose in talking with the album tour and everything i think a fun like flashpoint especially considering you are on the pr tour at the minute have you felt the lead up with this album has been a lot different, especially considering say up Queensland and Northern New South Wales that way there's been a lot of the floods. So has it been like the dynamics been shifted or the attentions elsewhere? Have you felt as a band different leading up because of things that have been happening around you? Um, I think in short, I, I find that really hard to answer because I, I just don't feel like I know anymore. And, and I'm probably not the only person who would, for sharing a sentiment like that where um you know in a world with like so many avenues for communication you can weirdly end up feeling like you're not part of any community or, you, or you're not really connected to anything i feel really uncertain about whether the messaging that we're trying to get out there or anything that we're trying to promote is um you know re reaching the right people and um yeah, you know, things like floods or whatever that um, have, have been awful. You know, I live in a really flood affected suburb here in Brisbane. I, I've been lucky to get away unscathed, but um, my suburb has been really badly affected. Um, I certainly consumed a lot of my thoughts in the last like couple of months. It's been a massive distraction for me. So I can only imagine how much more that's occupied other people's thoughts. It's definitely a crazy time this year. Like you would have certainly noticed that as we're kind of, uh, you know, coming out the other side of the pandemic, there's just a flood of new music, um, mm. you know, to use strictly business terms, like the market's flooded, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the only thing <laughs> that's flooded at the moment. Um, there's music fucking everywhere. 
and and people are still tr trying to get their lives on track so yeah it is exciting that music is bouncing back a bit but still just just a, a weird time i yeah <laughs> do you think it's all like um because i know because i do a bit of photography on the side as well and i feel like everything that's happened has affected my say endurance or tour endurance do you feel like you're having the same like you're coming in refreshed it's been two years you've had all this time to think and and write and you know potentially move in that new direction but do you think it's also weird on your your tour and mental endurance as well with all of that yeah i think so and i think strangely like it's it's now that we're noticing it um and, and I'm hearing other people say the same thing, like just generally, whether you're a musician or not, that like the, the toll of the last two years is more apparent now as we do return to, to normal. And you can, I guess you can read about similar things through history where if people were in the midst of a war, they're really just focusing on surviving and making it through each day. Um, and in some ways you can be really present or like community spirit can be sky high and then suddenly when life does go back to normal, whatever that is, you are left kind of figuring out, oh my God, what have we just, what have we just lived through? Um, Daniel, the drummer in our band keeps saying, he thinks that as the months and eventually years go on, like the pandemic and this whole period will feel more horrific in our minds. Like, and, and I tend to agree with what he's saying there. Mm, like blow it up more than it, what it is yeah i get that i think in some ways some of us are like or oh, we already are um because it just feels like a big fog which is kind of nice that all this uh, like the all the new music's coming out and everything as well so it's like we can kind of get back over a little bit of that fog hump and come into something really nice which is good <laughs> yeah and you know like um uh, as an artist i i sort of um in some ways don't care really what life throws um at me or the world like I, I just feel like um, my responsibility is to you know try and be the best person I can be and and just like reflect whatever happens whatever I feel I think as a sort of a neat summary of a lot of the things we've discussed um, I decided on this record and was inspired by some of my favorite artists um, from the 60s and 70s that were I, I was just like I can't think of any specific examples right now, which is a bummer, but I remember just um, noting a few examples of where the, these artists just like directly embraced whatever was happening um, politically or personally and, and, and just reflected that in the music. And mm. I was like, I want to, I think, I think I want to do that more. It doesn't mean the songs have to like stink of the pandemic, but like, um, you know, I want to just uh, talk about what me and, uh, all my peers and everyone has experienced and and further to that relating to kind of like the online marketing or whatever um, as I become more and more detached from that I I just try to have faith and believe more and more in the music doing the heavy lifting like I, I see that as my key responsibility I know this probably sounds really kind of ham-fisted but yeah you know like uh, that that responsibility of, of the writing and trying to just get the fucking record to be half decent. That's like pretty much all I'm concerned with. You know, I just try to hope that it will all work out if we do a good job. <laughs> yeah. Like by having both of them meet in the middle. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so if one other, I have one left, one question left. Um, yeah, go for it. You dropped a huge hint <laughs> about your track list uh, for the tour. And while I say huge, I mean, I think you listed pretty much every song. Have you <laughs> been able to narrow it down? Do you have anything that you can put out there or is it still hidden uh, until the third? No, we can talk about it for sure. Um, yeah, so we, um, not surprisingly, we've argued a great deal about what ought to be in the set lists these days. Um, it's, yeah, you know, this tour will be our first proper headline tour uh, for a long time, uh, it's, which is, you know, so we're celebrating not only the new record, Weirder and Weirder, but we never got to do a headline tour for our self-titled record that came out in 2020. So in mm. some ways it feels like we're touring both those records. Um, 
and, and on that, you know, we've definitely stacked the set lists like kind of fairly heavily in those two records favor. Um, but yeah, um, being able to expand the set to just be a bit longer, like we've done a lot of um, random festival appearances um, over the last two years where we've been able to, you know, do a show, uh, but most of those sets have been, you know, between 40 minutes and an hour, which is a bit shorter than what we were used to for a long time. So looking forward to playing longer. Yeah. Showcasing the last two albums, which we're so proud of. Mm. Uh, and then, yeah. And, you know, we always try and stack it with, with fan favorites. Like um, there's a few people in the band who are, you know, got the greatest hits mentality. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know if you're necessarily them, but... <laughs> greatest hits era yet, but I think Weeder Weeder is going to, um, but I think there's going to be a lot of uh, new fan favorites coming out of Weeder and Weeder as well. So that, which will be awesome. Like refresh, hopefully, yeah. refresh your current fans and then bring in new ones as well. So yeah. <laughs> well, that's the plan, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, thank you very much for your time, Sam. My uh, pleasure, man.